Welcome. A few days ago, I put out a video addressing some misrepresentation and minimization of COVID deaths in one of Dr. John Campbell's videos. This was his Freedom of Information Revelation video from January 20th. I realized that in the comments, I saw that some people had not really understood why I thought his video was such a misrepresentation. In this video, I want to address that and just follow up on that. And the way I'm going to do it is ask a few questions of John Campbell. So the central question is, what revelation? What's that revelation? How is that freedom of information a revelation? That's the main question. I'm going to divide it into three. I'm going to keep it short and to the point, and I hope you stick around. Hi, I'm Prof. Greg. I've spent my career in biomedical research, first in biotech and now as an academic. And today I want to follow up on the, on the, the topic of my video a couple of days ago, which was that video by John Campbell, which he called Freedom of Information Revelation, which focused on this particular subset of COVID deaths in England and Wales. I'm going to let John Campbell address each of the topics, uh, open up each of the topics, and then I want to follow up with a question. There's been an awful lot of debate about deaths in this pandemic. And there's a new Freedom of Information request release from the United Kingdom that shows the number of deaths actually solely attributable to COVID may be way lower than anyone had thought. So my question here is pretty simple. Why do you think this number of deaths, this 17,371 deaths, solely attributable to COVID, that is to say due to COVID, but with no other underlying conditions, why is that, quote, way lower than anyone had thought? Is it? What number did you think it was? Why is it way lower than anyone had thought? People die with pre-existing conditions all the time. People die of all sorts of things with pre-existing conditions. As people get older, people have more pre-existing conditions. If we take people who die of anything, a large number of them will have pre-existing conditions. If we look at the same data from the ONS that gave us the report itself, they tabulate people with pre-existing conditions in previous years, 2017 through 2019. And while it's a little bit different because certain pre-existing conditions like diabetes, hypertension, predispose one are risk factors for COVID and so elevate the risk of hospitalization and death for COVID, a lot of people who died in 2017 to 2019 prior to COVID had pre-existing conditions. Why should COVID be any different? Did you just think that COVID was plucking healthy people out of the sky and shooting them down like carrier pigeons? Why is this number a big deal? Why is it way lower than anyone had thought? And what number did you think it was? This actually came out last month and um, I've just discovered it yesterday. That's why I wanted to bring it to you now. There's been no mention of this whatsoever on mainstream media, um, at least on the BBC sort of ITV Channel 4 in the UK. And I haven't seen anything on the, on the US channels that I follow. So surprising, surprising that they haven't picked this up because it's a, it's a huge story. Uh, for media to cover, and they haven't. Why is this number a huge story? You point out that the major media has not really covered it, although they've covered it now, thanks to you, and so they've picked it up and covered it and pushed back on it. The ONS has issued a directive saying people should stop misrepresenting this number as COVID deaths. But before that, it wasn't a huge story. It wasn't picked up the main, by the mainstream media. You were correct. Why? I think it's because it's not that surprising. It's not actually a number that is different from what people who understand how these things uh, go about, that people die with pre-existing conditions. It's not surprising. So it's not surprising that people with COVID died while having pre-existing conditions. 
and it's not a huge story. Why do you think it's a huge story? What do you think is missing that makes it a huge story? And my third question kind of falls out of this. It's a related question. You said that the report was released last month, but you only found out about it yesterday. Yesterday, in that case, being January 19th. And then you put out your video on January 20th. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that's true. It was released on December 16th. It was released on December 16th. And so my question is, how did you come across it? As you point out, it wasn't in the major media. So how did you come across it? I'm actually curious about this. How do you pick and choose which stories to report? How did you come across that request and report? Because it's a curious report. It's a curiously worded request. The request was for people who died due to COVID with no other cause, right? Nothing else. And they died solely to COVID. That was what the request was. And the, re and the report came back. The people who died with no other pre-existing condition listed on their death certificate. If you were going to come up with a question that gave the smallest number, the lowest number that sounded official and sounded like it represented COVID deaths, that would be a pretty good question to ask. That's the question that will give you the lowest official sounding number. The people who died with nothing else going on, perfectly healthy, just taken down, cut down in the prime of health and life. So somebody asked that question, that very specific question. They asked that question and the ONS dutifully wrote up that report. And then they put out the report and as you point out correctly, it wasn't really picked up by the mainstream media. Now, my view is that it wasn't picked up by the mainstream media because it's not actually a big story. But somehow it was picked up later and it wasn't picked up by the mainstream media. It was picked up, so here it's December 16th is when it was put out and it was picked up just under a month later by social media influencers and not any social media influencers. These are people who are anti-mask, anti-mandate, anti-lockdown, and in some cases, anti-vax. They picked up on this somehow, found out about this obscure ONS report, and represented it as, in this case, a breakdown of the narrative. People who died of COVID, not with COVID, that kind of language. Somehow, astonishingly less than the number people were used to hearing. Now, it's less because it's a specific subset of people, and a lot of people who die have pre-existing conditions. So it's not less because of any surprising measure, but it's less because people who die many times have pre-existing conditions. But it was picked up by this particular circle of influencers starting around January 15th and 16th that's against mask mandates, that's against lockdowns, that's against vaccine mandates, and in some cases also against vaccinations. And they picked that up. And then a couple of days later, you put out your video. And your video has done well. One and a half million views in a week, pretty good. You put out that video and just like clockwork, people followed up. But in this case, they were politicians, politicians in the UK, politicians and, and uh, media personalities as far away as New Zealand. They made that same deaths of COVID, deaths from COVID, deaths with COVID distinction. Now, I want to be perfectly clear that you, uh, you didn't make exactly that, right? So the, the National Statistical, which is the news from the ONR, came out almost immediately after David Davis, MP, picked up on your video and then made these very misrepresenting uh, claims about COVID deaths. Uh, Dan Wooten 
similarly. He actually didn't pick up on your video, but he put it out. The, he put his out the day after your video, and he said the uh, Freedom of Information report was released the day before. So I suspect he probably got it from your video. It was a very popular video. So popular, so influential, that the also Office of National Statistics had to put out a corrective to push back against David Davis, Dan Wooten, and others who were picking up on this statistic and using it to mislead and minimize COVID deaths. I don't think you did that in that way. You didn't say that only 17,371 people had died of COVID. You're careful. You're not, you're not uh, uncautious. You're careful. You're not going to do that. But you clearly think that number is a big deal. You clearly think that number is important. You emphasize that as somehow profound, a major story, way lower than anybody had thought. I don't think any of that's true. I don't think it's a major story, or it wasn't until it became something that the Office of National Statistics had to push back against. Then it became a major story. But until then, it wasn't a major story. Until people started saying it was a major story and amplifying it and turning it into something that people thought meant something, something it doesn't, it wasn't a major story. So those are my questions. Why is that number a big deal? Why do you think it's way lower than anybody had thought? What did people, what, do you, what did you think it was if it wasn't in that ballpark? Why do you think it's a major story as opposed to just a minor expectable statistic due to the fact that people who die from COVID like people who die from other conditions often have pre-existing conditions. And curiously, how did you find out? How did you manage to pick up on this particular chain of social media, this corner of social media that was amplifying this in the days immediately preceding your video that then took it to the next level? I'm curious how that happened. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like or put a comment in. Let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. I'll see you in the future, in future videos. And uh, stay safe, everybody.